What's your immediate reaction when someone is like, uh, hey, you missed something? Like maybe you forgot to tie your shoe or answer a test question or actually send that text to the person on their actual birthday. Yikes. Um, but whatever the case may be, someone pointing out what you missed or a mistake that you made could feel pretty embarrassing, maybe even painful, maybe really upsetting. Today, we're gonna look at a story where Jesus pointed out what someone was missing and see how in our lack, Jesus meets us with his love. Let's dive in. Well, hey friends, we just kicked off our Jesus Songs series and man, you need to check out the song that went along with this week's message called Better Than Anything because it is so good. And this song was actually based on the scripture that we are going to be diving into today. Now, before we jump in though, I want to address a misconception that many people have. Now, I know a lot of people who think that it's mean or unloving to tell someone what's wrong with how they're thinking or behaving or living. And yes, while there are definitely some wrong ways to do that, telling someone the truth is one of the most loving things that you can do. See, my mom used to explain it to me like this. She was like, Caitlin, if you were walking full steam ahead towards the edge of a cliff that you couldn't see, and even if you could see, you just chose to keep moving towards it anyways, and, and like my mom saw it and said nothing, or maybe she was just like, hey, great walking form, you look good, and just let me keep on doing my thing until I plunged off the edge of the cliff, that would be super unloving. Like her indifference to my well-being would speak so much louder than any compliment she could ever give me. Because grace and truth are two sides of the same coin called love. So you can't have real love unless truth and grace are both present. So now that we've addressed that, let's jump in to our scripture. This is in Mark chapter 10. It says, as Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. You know the commands, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, I've kept all of these since I was a boy. And Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said. Go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell and he went away sad because he had great wealth. Now I've studied this story probably 16 times in the past few months. And beyond that, I grew up hearing it. But as I have read it over and over again this year, it's hit me completely differently than ever before. And I've sensed Jesus asking me some pretty hard questions. And I wanted to share with you what he's been teaching me. See, in verse 17, it said, Jesus started on his way and a man ran up to him and fell on his knees and said, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one's good except God alone. See, the first question that I've sensed Jesus asking me is the same question he asked that guy. He said, why do you call me good? Now, what Jesus is not saying is, he's not saying that this guy is wrong. He's more like saying, hey, you're onto something. You are rightly perceiving who I am. And I absolutely love how this is the foundation for the rest of this conversation that Jesus has. So again, the first question I feel like Jesus is asking me, and that maybe he might be asking you, is why do I call him good? Like, what is it that I have seen in him or experienced from him that has caused me to know his goodness? We say that saying every week in church, that God is good, and all the time God is good, but why do you say it? Like, where have you experienced God's faithfulness? Even in this last week, have you seen him heal someone 
you love? Have you experienced freedom from an addiction that held you captive? I don't know what it is for you, but why do you call Jesus good? That's question number one. For question number two, we're going to read verse 19. It says, you know the commands. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. See, what's interesting to me about this is um, the man asked what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus says, well, you know the commands. And he starts to list them out. And the interesting thing is that Jesus fails to mention any of the commands having to do with this man's relationship with God. Why? Well, this tells me something. It tells me that Jesus is intentionally drawing this man's attention to something specific, not his love for God. That's not where the problem was, but his love for his neighbors, his love for others. So the second question I felt like Jesus was asking me based on this story is, what has he been drawing my attention towards lately? And he does that gently. He does that patiently. He does that kindly. He opens our eyes to what he wants us to see and the parts of our hearts that don't yet look like Jesus's. The next question will come from the next couple of verses, starting in verse 20. The man answered and he said, Teacher, all of these things I have kept since I was a little boy. And that just stands out to me because as someone who grew up in church, I also have been following all the rules since I was really small. But here's where we get to the good part. It says in verse 21, Jesus looked at him and loved him. And what I've often failed to understand is that Jesus's assessment of me is never separated from his affection for me and his approval of me. Like before Jesus ever tells this guy what's wrong, he says, it looks, he looked at him and he loved him. He approved of him. He says, I love you. So I'm gonna tell you the truth. And that happens in verse 21. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said. Again, he's saying, I love you. I believe in you. Now, here's the thing I want to talk to you about. So question three for me, based on this story, is what would Jesus look at me, love me, and tell me that I lack? Like, what is keeping me from fully stepping into and participating in Jesus's mission? Because that's what this conversation is all about. See, what he essentially says to this man is, go sell everything you have, as much as you have been holding on to. Give to the poor, to the destitute, to those who are spiritually broken, and you will have something far more valuable in the good news about the kingdom of heaven then come and follow me. Because here's the thing, when you understand the mission of Jesus, you will want nothing more than to join him on it. But for this man, the conclusion of this story is that he went away sad because he had great wealth. Now, here's what I wanna encourage you with. Don't walk away from this video sad. Spend some time reflecting on these questions with me because there are some questions that Jesus has been asking me and I'm inviting you to go on the journey with me. Here we go. We're going to reflect on why we call Jesus good, what he's done in our lives, how he has demonstrated who he is and his faithfulness to us. Then we're going to let him direct us to the places in our hearts that need his attention. And then we're going to receive his assessment and his affection, his grace and his truth, because they are two sides of the same coin called his love. And then we're going to do what he asks and join him on his mission. See, the truth is that Jesus really is better than anything. And because I love you, I am telling you that if you are chasing anything else, you're missing it because knowing him is the greatest treasure. But you're gonna have to discover that for yourself. So if you don't know where to start to learn more about who Jesus is, I want you to check out our Who Is Jesus playlist right here on Switch Youth. 
I can't wait to see you there.